Science and technology are central to the way that we live our lives. The real world is filled with scientific devices, technological devices. We think scientifically about the world that we live in, we see the world through scientific spectacles. Sometimes we think that the science and technology will solve most of our problems. I think if we're to take charge of our future, if we're to make decisions about where our society, where our world is going, we have to understand the way that science and technology are helping to shape that world and the way that we can shape and direct the science and the technology. Science, technology and innovation studies tells us how science and society mesh together and how you can't see one without the other. Science is practised by people. You want to ask the question, well, how might the social context actually influence the very content of scientific thought. But one of the things that holds us together is an interest in the relationship between the science, technology, the innovation, as situated in a wider social, political, cultural context. Innovation is bringing new technologies and new knowledge to bear on our lives. We have to change and have to adapt continually. A lot of politics is now about scientific matters and a lot of scientific matters now inherently have a lot of politics caught up in them. Science, technology and innovation studies sits exactly at the boundary where those two sets of considerations meet. Genomics, the new life sciences, are changing the way that medicine is done, are changing the forms of medical knowledge and the forms of medical practice. So we're looking basically at cutting edge science that hasn't got an established route to market. It's understanding what the scientists are actually doing in the lab and trying to identify how they can actually get those products to market by looking at all the uncertainties and intangibles and uh, the various regulatory processes that they're going to have to traverse in order to actually begin getting these therapies into patients. A lot of what I study is looking at the technologies that exist between the boundaries between science fact and science fiction. It's examining how we can actually remove one organ from one person, breach the boundaries of their individual identity and put it into another. One of the things that I'm interested in is the scientists in the laboratories and how the social, ethical, political aspects have implications for the work that they do in the lab. So how do they think about animal research? How do they think about the wider political debates? Does this actually affect what science they do, what research funding they apply for? I'm interested to know how scientists develop research, especially in climate change and in global warming. And I'm interested to understand the social processes that actually facilitate this research. The way that scientists and technologists go about their work, they work within teams, they work within a wider political and social context, they have to please their sponsors, they have to come up with products that will sell. And all of those factors shape the way that they build their objects and the way that they build their knowledge. So the financial markets are actually one of the main high technology mathematical spheres of activity in modern societies by looking at them in their contexts. You can get a deeper understanding of the financial crisis than the standard rhetoric about greedy bankers. I guess it's my background in cultural studies and sociology that makes me so interested in um, understanding how people make sense of their lives, how people make sense of science, technology and innovation in relation to their own social location. Members of the public, they're very wise, they're very wise people and they have insights into the everyday life of technologies that we haven't really begun to understand yet. When you look at the interaction between, if you like, the North or the developed world and the South the developing world, you always find that scientific knowledge and artifacts and technology are in there. I want to find out what has the potential to influence innovation capacities and innovation processes in Africa. So by understanding the, the different roles that the society plays and the individuals, I think we can come up with strategies and approaches which are more appropriate for particular communities, specifically for Africa. The University of Edinburgh is a place where the foundations for studying science, technology and society were laid down. We attract students from all over the globe and the richness and their enthusiasm and their excitement, it's infectious. Being a group that is part of, you know, one of the founding groups also puts 
additional pressure on us to continually renew ourselves. People in, working in the department has done a great job on updating some of the old ideas into more current issues. And that makes us a great place to be, that makes us exciting because our emphasis is on remaining cutting edge. This is about real life. We don't expect you to be sitting up in a library reading books all the time. We expect you to be out there talking to the people that are doing the technology, that are doing the science, bringing those findings back, look at them and then making them useful and making them practical. Science, technology and innovation studies is a discipline with tools that help us to understand how science and technology are themselves shaped by our expectations and our aspirations so that we can take charge of those and help to shape the world that we live in.